Threads was one of the biggest software product launches ever. They got like 100 million users in the first five days. That's great for growth and Mr. Zuckerberg's pocket, but it's damn hard for a tech infra to scale that much that fast. So let's see some parts of the infrastructure that helped Meta launch Threads. Now, when you think of a backend system, there are two things you must think about. That's storage and compute. How will you store the data and how will you process the data? There are other things too, but these are the two things that generally come in top of anyone's mind. On threads, storage and compute, Meta wrote this blog article and let's talk about that today. It's a fantastic blog article. After watching this video, make sure to read that. Okay, so Meta uses two kinds of databases. One is a graph database called Tau, which is backed by MySQL. And other is a super scalable distributed key value database called ZippyDB. Both are Meta's internal proprietary technologies, although we can learn a little bit about them from whatever blogs they have written. In this video, we will discuss a bit about ZippyDB and how it helped Thread scale. Now, full ZippyDB architecture deserves a complete video of its own, but let's see some parts here that help the scale. ZippyDB is a distributed key value store running on Meta's architecture. The data is replicated across multiple shards or multiple machines or multiple nodes, and the consistency of the data is maintained using a consensus algorithm like Paxos. I won't go into the depth of what Paxos is, but you can check out my video on Raft, which achieves the same things as Paxos does, and you can learn more about distributed consensus algorithms. Just keep in mind, it helps to replicate the data across many nodes and to keep them consistent across one node to the other. Now let's think like this. Your application is scaling so rapidly that you will need more resources very fast. Now in ZippyDB, an application can have a key space, like threads will have a key space or it can have multiple key spaces as well, I think. And you can think of a key space is like a database and the resources will be allocated to that key space. So how would you add more resources to your key space? By having the key space run on more machines. The question is, how would you get more machines? Now, Meta has this large compute pool with many machines and ZippyDB for all the applications they have is running on that compute pool. Now, let's say they see that Threads is running on 50 nodes and it has a lot of incoming demand. And maybe there is something like Ocular service running on 60 nodes, but it has very less demand. Then some nodes can be added for Threads from the Oculus key spaces. While they can do this process pretty quickly, it would still need to go through some approvals and it would take some hours to few days to drain resources from other services or to bring those machines from other services or other key spaces to your key space or threads key space. Another quicker way is using ZippyDB's strong multi-tenancy architecture. So one machine can have data from multiple key spaces and the key space of threads can keep putting its data co-located with other key spaces from other services on the same machine. A key space will be divided into many logical shards according to the hash of its keys. So some keys would be in this logical shard, some other keys would be in this logical shards and so on and so forth. These logical shards are also referred as micro shards in one of the other articles, although I'm not really sure if they are entirely the same thing. Now, when the data is growing, they would need to distribute and redistribute these logical shards among these physical shards pretty rapidly. They have two of their own services to take care of this. One is shard manager which looks after the health of the physical shards, monitors failures, and also facilitates the data movement between the shards. Now, this takes care of moving the data, but how will you find the actual mapping of the logical shards to the physical shards? They have a data placement service called Accio, which does this mapping. It looks at various factors, you know, like the data access patterns of that service, the capacity available in a particular infrastructure and things like that. And it predicts where to keep the data so that the latency is minimum to access that data. I mean, it's crazy how much engineering that it needs to go behind to empower people to have a debate on which Godzilla movie is the best for that matter. Let's talk a bit about compute now. Meta has talked about a very specific idea here in this blog. And I think it's pretty great from a design perspective. It's about asynchronous processing of events. See, sometimes you want to do some computation. Maybe a user has followed Virat Kohli and you want to send a notification to him, but it's peak time. 
So there is already a lot of load on the servers. There are millions of people hitting follow button on Virat Kohli, on Messi, on Conor McGregor. So the operation of sending that notification might be a little bit slow. The user who hit the follow button now has to wait for the notification to go to Virat Kohli. Now ask yourself this question. Is sending the notification an action that is needed just now? Is it so urgent that it needs to be completed now or can it be completed later? You can send a notification later. So let's not do that right now. Let's just tell the user that you have followed and we can send the notification to Virat Kohli later when the systems are not that loaded. That's the idea. Defer some work which is not needed right now to off-peak hours so that your systems are in good health. Meta has an aptly named service for this called async where they submit jobs and then they are executed when the system can. I will not go into the full design of async. You can read the blog about async. They have a specific blog about that and I will link it in the description. But this enabled threads to onboard users very quickly when they were scaling so damn rapidly. For example, when you start using threads, you start following everyone that you follow on Instagram. Now, this action can be deferred a bit. You open your account, you get all the things that you need, but the follows can be updated progressively. It updates the social graph and adds the people that you follow when the load isn't much on the system. So you see, it's not going ahead and changing all the database entries when you are trying to onboard and not letting you post anything and not letting you do anything else. It's just blocking you and it's updating all your followers in the back end and adding much more load to the system. It's not doing anything like that. It lets you do whatever you want, but the followers are added slowly. Now, maybe the solution is not ideal. Maybe we'll say, I need to see everyone that I'm following in an instant when I open that account, but this is a practical solution. And this is the kind of ideas that you will need to build systems in real life when you are working on something like that. All right, this was all for today. As always, do read their blog in the description. I will leave multiple blog links and do subscribe the channel for more interesting engineering breakdowns. See you in the next one.